Hey, what's up grinders? I am Azard, and today in this Gems of War video we are going to take a look at the PvP teams for the week 15 of season 0. Before we hop into the action, I suppose we have to talk about the recent change that happened during the weekly reset this week. So, uh, previously we had to fight against some random teams here in the regions except in the central spire but now all of the regions include team with a hero so this means that all of the teams you see in the regions are a human made teams and they are actually teams what the other user used to attack in these kingdoms for example in Delicio here from shining force used uh, this kind of teams wound of source king mikhail and double defiance and uh, that's what we have to do from now on we have to fight against teams with hero and that this means that this is going to be a meta fest so to speak and of course it's going to be 10 times harder as well instead fighting like some random ai made teams bay of stars restricted by urska troops this week and as you saw we are going to use a triple defiance and wand of stars with elementalist Elementalist brings protection and Wand of Stars works as a mana generator and we are using Triple Defiance. This is pretty cr good troop, I would say. Uh, deals magic plus 3 damage to an enemy and a random enemy boost by enraged allies. If the enemy uses brown mana, he deals double damage. A stone skin reduces damage from skulls by 50% and deals double skull damage versus brown enemies and Gift of Defiance gives 4 to all skills on all Ursk allies when matching extra turns. So as we are using 3 of these, every time we match an extra turn, we will get 12 skill points to all of our skills, magic included. Right, let's go and try this team against Indalicio. Um, check the extra turns and try to get your uh, Defiance or Wand of Stars going. I think we are going to take uh, this. Whoops. Well, gladly, the enemy is using only a sentinel class. Let's see. There's the entangle. Let's cast our Wand of Stars. And now we can start cooking with our Defiance troops. Let's take those extra turns and pump up our stats. We're dealing 132 damage. And that's a doubled up uh, versus all brown allies, which means all of the enemy troops. We're going to target hero first. And we do that again. Uh oh, Sentinel class. Well, there's a good point about that class. We're getting a little bit pummeled over here. That's fine. Let's try to get our troops back up. There. All right. Uh, Nobody is barriered. I think we are targeting this. Pretty heavy damage over there. And we proceed with another cost over there. And we finish this fight with the last cost. Ah, we lost a troop, but that's okay. As long as we are winning, I'm happy. There. And the other team that can be used here in the Urska Kingdom is pretty much the same team, but we're using uh, Doomclaw and uh, King Mikhail. Now, uh, the enemy is using Theodorovich, and it's okay his troop, but I prefer not to use this troop because there's a possible uh, backlash going on if the enemy gets up and gets their thing going. So we are again dealing uh, double damage versus brown enemies with defiance and doomclaw. We try to devour and King Mikhail can be used for example to explode those wish gems that Theodore Rich generates. Let's try how we fare against this lineup. Um, no extra turns, it seems. I suppose we could take this. Okay. Like that. And I suppose we take this. Alright, and everybody is going. Luckily, the enemy didn't get extra turn. We do that skull bog to get rid of the barrier. Do we have extra turns? I think we don't. And the, and the enemy is also um, blessed, so we can't devour. I think we're 
trying to buff up our stats a little bit more. Maybe we cast our defiance on the top troop. Not big damage, but hey, it's all welcome. Let's do that. And I think we are going to skull poke them down. Remember, double skull damage versus brown enemies, and enemy uses brown, so we do that. Okay, mm, we could try to curse them with umbral source. Let's do that. Uh oh. <laughs> well, at least we got rid of the bless. There's the summon. Let's see if we can get devour. And that worked. The other is just gone. Now we try to deal damage over there. Now we do that. And I suppose we do that. The double skull damage is very welcome. Let's generate some mana with our King Mikhail. Is that a kill? It is. Right. There. Not very fast, but quite easy kingdom, let's say that. Winter's Reach, restricted by Urskaya troops. So, not just Urska, but Urskaya kingdom troops. And we're fighting against Eagle Gundam 999. Uh, we're okay. Yeah, Urska and Cleaver, Doomclaw, Enraged Grandra and Grandra. I'm using this kind of lineup. Mm, I think we might get pummeled over here. Urskala gives 50% start to our Urska allies which means King Mikha. And then we are using Elementalist with Ruthless Defense, Explode Brown Champs and Grunts, Random Status Effect to all Urskaya allies and can summon troops. And I'm using uh, Base Kurandra over here, a little bit easier to get up. Enraged Kurandra of course would be a little bit better, but I found that the mana cost is slightly too much to get it going uh, quickly. Damage to an enemy and then convert Yellow Champs to Doom Skulls. It can also Inflict curse on all enemies. Right, let's try this team. The problem with these Urskaya and Urska troops is that you have to work to get things going, and we can't use things like Wand of Stars here in this kingdom, so we just have to rely on the Kingdom Exploder troops, for example. Let's try that. I think we have to get our mm, weapon going, so we could try that. Okay, they're skull poke, but they're luckily entangled. Let's try that. Now we can explode at the board. And I think we are cooking pretty quickly. Another extra turn. Mm. Let's take that. However, we don't have a extra turn with enriched grandra, but that's fine. Maybe things change. There's a skull poke. I think we are just. Oh, we do that. That too. Uh, we could do a skull poke when we explode this row. Okay, this could be. Well, I think I. Hmm. There's double skull poke actually. So if I do this. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, we do this. Alright. And now, oh, what a lucky cascade. Now we have an extra turn on Doom Claw. And I think an explosion would kill their Doom Claw. That's the biggest threat over here, I would say. Of course, Enraged Grandera is annoying because they are uh, invulnerable. So we cannot uh, entangle them. Right. I suppose we just go and do explode over here and hope for good cascades. Okay, we lost a troop. I uh, we would like to have green or purple, which we don't have. So we just I suppose this is our only good match. Okay. Alright, now we can summon some meat shields. And I think this should be a match with this. Yeah. Alright. Slow battles. Not very good idea to fight in these kingdoms. But let's try another team. Maybe that's a little bit faster. Urskitur, Urskala, Axe of the Northern Enraged Kurendra is our, our enemy lineup. And we are using Triple Werecat. 
So, we're at one of the mm, uh, faction troops from Werewood. And um, this troop deals magic plus 4 damage to an enemy. And if there are 30 or more red gems, he deals triple damage and then creates 8 red gems. Pretty nice spell, however, there's a 25% chance to transform into Thornburn. That's okay. It's not end of the world because the red gems are created first and uh, then the uh, red gems that match go into the Torburn and you can try to loop and do some skull pokes with Beastmaster Torburn. Using Rattless Defense over here again uh, as our mana generator and we are using Sun Spear class that creates a firestorm at the start of the every turn. Snap Freeze, Insulated, Root Trap helps with survivability. And then there's the Deluge, Submerge, a random ally on extra turns, Firebringer, and Fireblade, which don't do anything for us. Anyway, we try to get those red gems on the board, and then do that triple damage and try to loop with our workouts, and hope that the Torburn doesn't show up. Uh, gotta get our weapon going, because usually there aren't many um, red gems on the board right off the bat. Purples, greens, I think we do that, that's an extra turn, right? For example, now there's only 7 red gems, it's not a good idea to cast this troop. You don't get much out of it. That's an extra turn if I give that. Do they use elementalist? They do. Le I let them skull poke me. And we do this. Then we take that extra turn. Green source purples would be very nice. And we do that. Mm -hmm. If we do that, 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 do we want to? Only 10. Okay. Alright, now we can explode at the board. 11. Let's do that. Hopefully we get those ex uh, red gems on the board. Yeah, alright. Now we can start cooking. Let's try. And we want to get rid of you. That's an extra turn, we got to keep our work at. Uh oh, that was a bad mistake. Now, because they have elementalist, we are under freeze and we can't loop even if we match those extra turns. Maybe good idea to target the, their hero over there. And no red gems on the board either. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's try to explode the board. Maybe we get something good from the uh, explosion. Now we get rid of you. Then we target you. Mm, I think we are targeting you again. Oh, I forgot to check the red gem amount. Only 12. We explode the board, get a summon, and only 11. Uh, so much about the speedier team. But the uh, submerge helps a little bit. Uh, we target, we explode board. Okay, I think now. Oh, only, only twelve. Mm. Let's see, let's see. Maybe now. Oh, finally. And we looped. There's the Torburn. That's fine. This is a match anytime now. There. Right, in my test it rolled pretty nicely, uh, if you just get your weapon going, maybe it's a good idea to use the weapon in the first slot, uh, if you can uh, survive, that is. And uh, then we move on to Adenia with brown restriction. Uh, we're fighting against Steve, and Steve has, surprise surprise, Wand of Stars and Elementalist with the Kraken, King, Taraski and Mistralos. We're using a little bit different uh, approach over here, because they were using Elementalist, uh, we want to uh, use impervious troops, and you might think this is a uh, trash lineup, but um, trust me, it's pretty nice actually. Uh, the main star in this team is that Doomed Spade from the previous uh, Tower of Doom event. event. This weapon deals magic plus 5 damage to the first two enemies and plus 2 per tempering level, and then creates 2 brown gems for each brown ally and enemy. So that means 16 brown gems each cost, and um, a Dwarven Miner is impervious, cannot be frozen, and has the stone link. Blast Cannon uh, has also the stone link and is also impervious. We can try to silence some enemies with this, and Dwarven Miner can create some gems 
with the gem destroyer destro destroying in the last slot we are using Sigorax, also impervious and we can double a chosen color gem on the board and give some life on our troops uh, we try to get our doom spade going and try to uh, just get a doom spade going before the enemy starts rocking losing wand of stars so this could turn very nasty very quickly but at least we can uh, survive with the snap freeze uh, we want to take this then we take uh, this this okay now our Sikoras is going we do that now we could double up the browns there and now we start with the loop process look at all those brown gems pretty much endless loop against the brown lineup just deal the damage over there and, uh, now we good double up the brown again with Sikorax and that's a match there you could use doom spade up top however with all the uh, extra mana from the trades I think uh, for example a single uh, 3 gem match 3 gem brown match with Dor Dwarn Miner without even mana swords gets him up so 3 brown 3 gem matches and your doom spade is going the other team for this region could be for example some kind of lineup like this mm, Wand of Stars, Taraski and Double Empowered Herald of Divination converts blue gems to purple Daughter of Ice converts red gems to blue and Conjures and Ice Storm both start with mm, full mana in this case uh, we want to get rid of Wand of Stars first Do we have a conversion alignment? No blues. How about purple? No purples either. But a pretty nice chunk of mana if we convert those uh, blues to purple, and that's what we are going to do. Now, here we have a question. We could take this, then uh, this. And I suppose we cost. Actually, we are just going to take this and get rid of their hero there now we start blessing our troops maybe loop with cost all right all right cost over there and we spam the board and we get rid of you and then we spam the board more to get a generally going and this is a match there right those are the brown teams this week towards the ancient cat with a giant restriction once again we are fighting against Korotak also stone border and Hindla frost crown we tried this uh, ruby macaque team over here only one damage dealer so if we lose this this is going to be pain but um, let's try out this first against a border lineup the problem is if their also stone gets going oh Hey, Woolhawk. Okay, that's fine. Alright, how much? 8 browns, not good. Let's do that. Okay, maybe we could loop. Nope, and there's the blue storm. Um, not very nice. And now we are frozen as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we are casting this lava troll. Maybe we get some gems on the board we didn't keep our turn that's fine let's do again that damage and there's the submerge as well oh no well fine let's do that damage over there the blue storm kind of helps our rupee macaque we can't take that because we are frozen we are just dealing the damage over there and try to get rid of their also storm Woo! that was a heavy skull bog over there Mm, we could try to double up the browns and just get our rupee macaque going. I think we have to do this with the skull pokes because they get submerged going all the, all the time. Let's get the 
port shuffled. And we do that again. Oh no, they are in... Oh, please don't, don't, don't. Ugh, I should really pay some attention over here. Mm. So we try to get rid of the barrier. There, and now this is a match. And it seems my Goebbels are also oh, hustling around over there. If you hear that knocking sound. Anyway, so the border lineup probably is the best over here. We're trying how. Alright, I had a withered vast slotted over here. This troop, uh, there is a 10% chance to devour troop boost by blue gems on the board. If the devour doesn't happen, he deals magic plus 4 damage. Has the clopper trade as well and immunity stun as well. That's very nice trades. And we're using rope dart, it a little bit helps to pull up annoying troops up top and remove their armor and get rid of them. Let's go and try this. Instead, uh, Titan, we are using Elementalist for the protection. We just saw what happens when you don't use Elementalist. Extra turns, no, I don't see any. I think we are going to take these reds and yellows. No reds, I suppose we do this. Then we could do this. Oh, extra turn enemy. Oh no! Okay, giant gems and there's doomed hammer. Hmm, let's do that. Okay, well that was quick. Oh right, there's the flopper trade that works. I think I'm going to pull you up top. Then we proceed with the skulls. Skullpok over there. Yeah, the clopper trade is really nice. For sure. With Widar the Wast. There. Hmm, th this is a nice team, to be fair. A lot more better now instead that Ruby Macaque team. Then we move on to Geheron, which is Red Restriction and a Blood Frontier Kingdom today, it seems. And a <laughs> couple Takshaka teams there. Uh, Wand of Stars, Tesla, Takshaka, Takshaka. Alright, we are going to get our Takshakas going and our Stellarix with the loop. Let's try how we fare against Takshakas with Takshakas. No hero here. We just hope that we get our Stellarix going and blast our way to the victory. Pretty nice starting board. Yep, we connected. Can we keep our turn? Yeah, and is this a match? It is. Yeah. So Stellarix is still pretty nice. Ah, oh, if you just get it going. But with the enemy Takshagash, you are going to get pummeled here and there. And that's how it goes with this new PvP. You are going to get your ass handed to you from time to time. And just gotta accept that. Zul got Wand of Stars. What's the other red team I built for this kingdom? It's a Tesla team. Alright. We go and try that. We're using Gimlet to get Wand of Stars going a little bit quicker. And uh, then we just hope we get alignment with Wand of Stars cast and get our Teslas going. Green to brown with Gimlet. We have only that. However, we do have this. And uh, there's an extra turn with Gimlet. We do that. Check for more extra turns. Now let's see, is this a reliable wand board? I think that's pretty nice. We are going to try our luck. We missed, I think, yeah. Let's d try again. I think we might have missed again, yeah, uh oh. Okay, moment of truth. And uh, what is happening? Oh crap, Divinia is giving barriers on them as well. Cause a random positive status effect <laughs> on a random ally on extra turns. Wow. Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe we get rid of the enemy with our Tesla. The enemy Wand of Stars. 300. Nope, that's not the case. Uh, hmm. Okay. I think we just have to cost. Tesla and hope for the best. Nope, didn't connect. And we are in problems. Uh oh. 
Whew. That was nice. Okay, the enemy is mm, barriered. We really want to get rid of one of stars here. There's an extra turn with Jimlet. We can probably get rid of the barrier that way, right? And our other Tesla is loaded. We do cost over there. Now we gotta get our Tesla going. Otherwise, we are in big, big problems. Wow. There's the submerge as well. Super annoying. Mm, I suppose we just try to curse them and generate some mana and now this is a match. Wow. This new PvP man. Broken lands restricted by construct troops this week. We're fighting against Yuki and Yuki is using triple finesse with Dawnbringer. We're using the Empress team, Jernbok up top. Someone say Dust Storm when my turn begins and has the Stone Skin trait. You create uh, 10 brown gems and explode the board, pretty much. The Empress buffs up your last ally. For that, we are using the Ruby Macaque AoE true damage. And we're using Theodore Rich to speed up the fight process as he creates those wish gems with We Can Explode with Jernbok or the Ruby Macaque. We're using Elementalist for protection. If you get want, you can use Geomancer class for a little bit more speed, but I found that Elementalist is pretty a good idea, actually. We want to get our Jerenbok going. Now we explode the board. Then we... Oh, wow. We gave mana to everybody. Well, that's the thing that can happen with those wish gems. Uh, we buff up our hero. 110 damage. Not enough. I think we're going to explode the board again. Let's beef up our hero. That's the only thing what we want to do, and this is a match. There. It works when it works, but of course, it can backfire brutally at times. The other team, what we are using here in the Construct Kingdom is... Uh, it's a Lord of Slaughter team with Voiceless Golem. Alright, yeah. Do we have to... Okay, we are fighting against Finesse troops again. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go then. So, um, Voiceless Golem, pretty nice troop from Pond's Whale, a construct wild folk. Uh, has the stone skin trait and explodes a gem, and then silence a random enemy for each yellow gem destroyed, surrounded by the exploded gem. Right. So if we found a, a gem that has, for example, yellow, uh, four yellow gems, and we explode that gem, then the whole enemy lineup might be silenced. Wand of Stars for mana generation, Lord of Slaughter creates six brown gems and then converts all brown gems to Doom Skulls and uh, that's about it in this lineup. And we're using Jernbok to create that dust storm at every turn so that we actually have the uh, skull alignment easier. Um, that's about it. Using Elementalist for the protection again. So Let's see what kind of board we get. Of course, if we take any extra turns that we see, as long as we aren't frozen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we want to take maybe this. Mm, then maybe this. All right, now we can try the silence. For example, here, four yellow gems. Now, if we explode these red gems, Ta-da, everybody is silenced. Now we can spam the board pretty nicely because their tank is also uh, entangled, so they can't uh, do harm with the skull pokes. There's an alignment with Lord of Slaughter. Let's do that. And then we spam the board to get mana back to Lord of Slaughter. Let's cast Wonder of Stars. Do we have skull alignment? We do. We get rid of their hero. We do that. And we again try to get our Lord of Slaughter going and those skull alignments would be nice. Uh, we don't have any, but uh, I think I'm just trying to push my luck. Let's do that and see what happens. I think we kept our turn. Nice, nice. Let's get mana once more for the Lord of Slaughter. And is this a match? There's only one skull alignment over there. I think I'm pushing my luck again. That's about it. Yeah. It works pretty fine. Voiceless Golem is seriously un an underrated troop. And then we move on to the Summer Isle. 
are restricted by Suncrest troops again. Uh, not my favorite regions. Purging against, we're playing against Blade of Morning. Right, this is nice weapon. Removes all purple gems and creates yellow gems equal to the purple gems removed. Mm, pretty nice weapon as long as there are some purple gems on the board. That is, I used to use this weapon with Orary to get the max out of the spell cast. Harpy Mage, Ruby Red, Ehegatzel, pretty much the same that we are using. And we're using Harpy Mage, exports to board, start with 75% mana. Stuff of Storms, Explodes Yellow Gems, and we're using Sunspear class to create Firestorm at the start of every turn for Ruby Rat and a Hegatel for some uh, mana generation purposes. Starts Empowered, but usually we don't have to cast this troop. Of course, if we, if we find alignment, we are going to do that. Let's see how we fare. Mm. Extra turn, a nice... We do that, then we do that, and then we do. Ah, oh, we could. Yeah, I guess we are going to cast this over here. More mana is more mana, you know. Now we explode the board. We want to explode these. Take the extra turns. Don't leave them to hero. We do a Ruby Rat cast over there. Now, if we can, we can explode those yellow gems. Maybe get some status effect as well. And we got a Ruby Rat going. There's another cast and touch a match. Alright. I built actually another team, a new team for this kingdom for this week. I felt like it was time for something new. This battle keeps the most VP. So we go over there. It's a Queen Chachi team. I found that most of the enemies, at least yesterday, used Elementalist class. So I bring, brought Hybrid Saska into lineup. Conjures a Light Storm when my turn begins and can bless all yellow allies. Meaning everybody except your hero, of course. But we are using Elementalist, so we have immunity to stun because of Fortitude. And we have insulated immunity to freeze as well. So, your hero cannot be frozen unless it's cursed first and then stunned. Right. So we can cleanse our troops with High Priest Saska. Harpy Mage again to get things going and Queen Chotzi deals magic plus 3 damage to all enemies and if there is a storm, she explodes 5 gems. Also there is 35% chance to summon a Harpy Mage when maxed in extra turns. So if we lose troops, we can summon troops with Chotzi or our Staff of Storms. Let's try how we fare against the enemy. Mm, reds or yellows or extra turns, I want to get our Harpy Mage going. I think I want to explode reds or purple, so I'm uh, casting Harpy Mage on our hero. Uh, not very good explosion, but that's fine, I suppose. We do this, and then we explode yellows or browns. Alright, there's the storm. Now we do that. Can we loop? Nope. We could do again yellows or browns. Okay. There. We looped. Nice, nice. That's the good thing about Jochi. It can do multiple loops when you have storm running with the gem explosions. There. It's okay, Steam, I would say. Morashi X boss restricted by Mystic Troops. Uh, we are fighting against uh, Corvim. And Corvim has no hero. Mm, okay. B, Sikorax, Sekma, Queen of Sin. Right. We're using this uh, double Queen Titania team. Uh, we're using Soothsayer uh, to get Wand of Stars going. Soothsayer starts empowered and you pick a purple gem. And Soothsayer will destroy its row and column. As long as the row and column doesn't have any skulls. Uh, our Wand of Star is going to get up with the Soothsayer cast. Queen Tatsania deals magic plus 2 damage to all enemies, boost by red enemies and allies. And if there is 30 or more red gems, she will gain an extra turn. She can also fairy fire a random enemy on extra turns. Right. We're using Sun Spear to create the Firestorm at the start of every turn. There's also insulated Snap Freeze, Root Trap, all that good stuff from the talent tree. Um, 
As long as the board has 30 red gems, when we cast Queen Titania, we will get an extra turn. We do those cards, then regenerate the mana to Queen Titania's, and because of the Sun Spirit trade, hopefully there is plenty of red gems on the board. Let's try this team. So we find the purple gem, and make sure that the row and column don't have many skulls, or better yet, no skulls at all. Of course, if you get extra turns, that will help too. Okay, our Wand of Stars is going, we could take those. I think we want to take that too. And now we try our luck with um, Wand of Stars. Not very good board though. Hmm, oh well, here we go. I think we got our turn, but do we have red gems? Woohoo, we have! Alright, check that out. Extra turn, extra turn, mana generation, fail, double fail, triple fail, uh, 13, and that's a match. Yeah, it works when it works. Of course, it can backfire, like everything in this current PvP. What was the other mystic team that I built for this region? I wonder it was some... Oh yeah, a B team. A little bit different B team. Double B tricks. Ooh, 78 VP against Turco. <laughs> and surprise, surprise, they're using B tricks as well. Right. Is this A? Pretty much same lineup. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, they are using Wand of Stars up top. I'm using it in the third position. Uh, I don't know which one is better, to be fair. Let's try how our Petrix fare against enemy Petrix. Uh, the good thing is that we have the first turn. Yellow to green. Uh, I think there's none. And, but we have Elementalist and we have extra turns. So this could turn pretty nice. Yellow to green. There's one, but that's not enough to us. I want to take... Maybe I want to take... This to get our wand going. Okay. I think it's time to camp a little bit. Let's cast our wand. Pretty favorable board. We should get extra turn. Yes, we got it. And now we just... Try to... Uh, loop with our Beatrix. That's nice. We do it again. And we do it with the other P. And... Uh oh. One more. Whew, that's a match. Yeah. Right. I kinda like the uh, Sun Spear team better myself. But that's just my opinion. And the last region today is South Wild, restricted by green troops. We're fighting against um, Jim Knopp. And they are using Wand of Stars, Diamantina, Wild Queen, and Leprechaun. We are using Wand of Stars, Stellarix, and Double Empowered Troops. Veneratus converts red gems into yellow dragon gems. Mercy uh, converts purples to yellow. Glance all allies. Glance is very important against some snap freeze, etc. Yes, they are using Elementalist. What a surprise. We try to get our wand going with the Empowered and if we're lucky, we can get our dragon going as well. Purple to yellow, pretty nice alignment over there. Do we have snap freeze? We don't. Red to yellow, mm, yeah, we are casting mercy. There. And then we are casting Venerados. Uh, not very nice port. There's a do uh, doom, uh, excuse me, bone storm running from here. Someone a bone storm at the start of the battle. But hey, that suits our Stellarix. We could get extra turn boost by the skulls. I think we got it. Because of the skulls, exactly. Now would be a good time to maybe... Oh, let's see, let's see. Okay, we're going with the Emperor Stars. Come on. Whoa! Oh. Woo! Yeah. Um, there's a nice extra turn. They are going to get blessed anytime soon, except if, if the AI is stupid enough to uh, use the curse option. But with this skull poke, this is also a skull poke. And oh, we're entangled! <laughs> Not very nice game. 
Okay, we just do then. Mm. This then. Alright, let's try again. Alright, now our Stellrix is going. Yeah. Mm. Not easy fights, even with Stellrix. If the enemy is hard enough. The other team for this region is a string filler team. Were you fighting against? Uh, yeah, I'm not even trying to say that name. Yeah, okay, that went well. Uh, Daraski eclipses Merit. Uh, we could uh, silence you, you, and you. Uh, you are impervious, but we could try to curse you and then silence you. Let's try how we fare against B team. Or, ex excuse me, with B team against that nasty lineup. So, version 1 of start for, for mana generation. A string fiddler can silence enemies, export board, and gain an extra turn as long as he isn't frozen. Uh, some will say leave storm at the start of the battle. And B, you know what B do, does. Then, um, Leprechaun to get things going. They are using elementalist, so are they using a storm aura as well. So much of the green storm then but that's fine let's try this the brown storm can help with b loops anyways uh, do we have extra turns i think we don't we should probably take that yeah okay now we are going to cleanse our troops with wand of stars hopefully we can connect some extra turns we don't and this is not going very well at the moment, but we do it again. Because why not? This isn't Guild Wars after all. Pretty nice board for B. We are going to try our luck. Okay, uh, we're going to do that again. Now we could silence you. And we could silence you. Then we do that. Do we want to... Maybe cost B again. Okay, now Daraski is going. I think we have to... Mm. Okay, so here's the thing. We could uh, curse, try to curse, but the board is absolutely nonsense for the Umbral Stars. So I think our best option over here is to cast uh, String Fiddler and just try to loop with B. Worked. We can do that again, and again, get our B going that way, okay. Now we could try the uh, Umbral Stars trick. We are going to lose troops if we miss. I think we got the extra turn, however, we didn't uh, get our String Fiddler going, but that's fine. We are going to cast the Elemental Stars now, and oh no! Okay, that's fine. Now we can at least silence the Taraski because they are cursed. And now we proceed with Beatrix. There. <laughs> I made it a harder, uh, little bit harder than it actually was. Could just spam B and hope for the best. But hey, I don't like to lose. That's about the teams for this week. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this new uh, PvP update that we got. And uh, social stuff, hey. Comment, like, subscribe. Has us off. Peace!